Look out, Secret Seven, by Enid Blyton. It was the holidays at last, and Peter and Janet decided to call a meeting of the Secret Seven the very next day. They telephoned the rest of the Secret Seven to tell them. Soon, all the members knew of the meeting, and Peter put down the telephone for the last time. Oh, I do hate telephoning. Everyone wants to be so chatty. Well, you sounded pretty chatty yourself when you spoke to George and Colin. And what a pity Susie came to the telephone when you wanted to speak to Jack. Now she knows there's a meeting. She'll try and play one of her usual silly tricks. I bet she won't give Jack your message. She said she was going to a fancy dress party tomorrow, so we'll be safe from her for once. Oh yes, I remember now. Her cousin's giving a fancy dress affair tomorrow afternoon. That awful friend of hers, Binky, is going too. Now listen, we'll have to be pretty busy tomorrow if we're going to meet in the shed. I hope the gardener hasn't taken away the boxes we used to sit on. And Scamper, I hope you've been keeping down the mice there for us. It was very pleasant next day to turn out the old shed and make it tidy and clean. Janet looked round, pleased with their work. Boxes to sit on, mugs on the little shelf. Seven little plastic plates for biscuits. The meeting was to begin at five o'clock, and at five to five, Peter, Janet, and Scamper were sitting in the shed waiting. Then Scamper suddenly whined excitedly. He had heard footsteps. Password, please. Holidays. Right. Come in. Hello. Here comes someone else. Password, please. Holidays. Password. Is it holidays? Oh, thank goodness it is. Hey, isn't it nice to be the Secret Seven again? Are we all here? It's a bit dark in the shed this evening. Only Jack to come. I think I can hear him now. Yes, here he is. Password, Jack. Holidays. What's up, Scamper? He's growling at Jack. He's never done that before with any of us. Jack, take off your cap. Perhaps that's why Scamper's growling. Uh, I think I'd better keep it on. I've got a bit of a cold. Oh, take it off, Jack. George suddenly whipped off the cap, and everyone stared in amazement. Long hair tumbled out from under the cap. It's Susie, not Jack. Susie, how dare you dress up in Jack's clothes and come to our meeting? Well, Binky and I were on our way home from the fancy dress party. Jack lent me his clothes, so I went as a boy. I was Jack, and Binky was Jill. She's outside now. <laughs> It was so easy to get into your silly meeting. You really are a lot of simpletons, you know. Just get out, Susie. With pleasure. Jack will be along soon. I told him the meeting was at half past five. So it isn't his fault he's late. Am I clever enough to be one of the Secret Seven? Get out, Susie! Oh, don't push me, Binky! Help! Help, Binky! Ah! ah! Oh, sorry. <laughs> That was the pail of water we took as Jack and Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Good shot, Binky. Good night, all. Hope you have a pleasant meeting. <laughs> Jack was just about to set off when Susie and Binky came rolling up the drive, laughing, the pail clanking between them. When they told him what had happened, he sat on the front steps and groaned. He had been looking forward to the meeting so much. Now he couldn't possibly go. He went to the telephone to apologise for Susie's behaviour. He was just about to lift the receiver. When it rang. Hello, Jack. Jack, it really is you, not Susie, is it? This is just to say that the meeting is off for tonight. We're all rather wet. I expect Susie told you all about it. Yes, I'm sorry, Janet. Really, I am. No, don't apologise. You weren't to blame. But Peter wants to say the meeting is postponed till tomorrow. 
Will you come then? Yes, yes, I'd love to. So the next night, the Secret Seven met once more, and this time there was no growling from Scamper, for it really was Jack there, not Susie. The meeting went well, and everyone enjoyed themselves eating biscuits and drinking lemonade. Now, if this club is going to continue properly, we'll have to decide on doing something together. Like helping somebody, you mean, Peter? Mother says we ought to help some charity. If we can't think of anything to do, she says it's silly to have a club that just meets and eats and talks. Well, I like that. We've done heaps of things in this club, helped people, solved mysteries. Only last term we found that dog stealer. All and... right, all right. I'm only telling you what my mother says. Well, it's fun to have some aim, some interest. Here we are, just eating more and more biscuits. We don't seem to have a brain between us. Barbara's right. We must think of something to do. Now, who has any ideas? Isn't there some mystery we can try to solve? The only one I can think of is to find out who tied our headmaster's chair halfway up the flagpole in the school grounds. <laughs> <laughs> It will be a waste of time to solve such a silly little mystery. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it didn't turn out to be that awful Susie who put it there. Uh, I've just had an idea. Not a very good one, I'm afraid. What about trying to get old General Branksome's medals back for him? They've been stolen, you know. But how on earth could we do that? Even the police haven't found out who took them. No, I know. But he lives next door to me, and well, the medals meant an awful lot to him. I vote we try to find the medals. Well, I think it's rather an impossible task. I vote we set ourselves some other job as well. Surely the Secret Seven can tackle two things. What's the second task to be then? I vote we keep an eye on nesting birds in Bramley Woods. There's apparently a gang going about there, pulling nests to pieces and taking eggs. What do we do next then, Peter? Hadn't someone better go to see the general and find out when the medals were stolen and all that? Yes, yes, of course. Well, I think Colin should do that, as he knows him. Will you, Colin? Uh, yes. I suppose it had better be me. Gosh, I hope he won't mind me asking him questions. Well, surely he won't mind you being interested. And as for the other thing the Secret Seven mean to do, we'd better arrange with one another to go walking through the woods and look out for anyone disturbing nests. We'll go about in twos or threes. We'll feel braver then. Right. Team up with each other and report back to the club in four days' time. If you want to call a meeting before then, leave a note down in the shed where Janice or I will see it. They all said goodbye. Peter and Janet shut the shed door and, with Scamper at their heels, raced up to the house. The other members of the club made their way home. Colin dreaded the task of talking to the old general. He thought about it in bed that night. He decided that the next morning, when the general took his walk in the garden, he would throw his ball over the wall. Then I'll sit on the wall and apologize. And ask if I can slip into the garden and find my ball, and maybe we'll get into conversation. Yes, that's what I'll do. Good morning, General. Oh, good morning, Colin. Not at school today? No, it's the holidays. I'm uh sorry, but my ball flew into your garden. May I get it? Yes, of course. Come along down. And what about a glass of lemonade? Emma, Emma. I have company. Two lemonades, please, and some biscuits. Emma was the general's cook. She brought the lemonade, and soon Colin and the old man were in his sitting room. The walls were covered with photographs of the general and pictures of old battles. But one space over the mantelpiece was bare. Colin knew why. The general saw him looking at the bare space and sighed heavily. Uh... I expect you heard about someone stealing my medals. To think of a cowardly thief owning them, they were all I had left to show I was such a fine soldier. All I had left, and now my medals are gone. I feel old, so terribly old. Oh, don't, please! I'll find your medals for you. I promise you. Listen to me. I'll find them. 
I believe you, my boy. Ah, <laughs> you're a boy after my own heart. You'll be winning medals yourself one day. Uh, Emma, what do you want? Can't you see I have a visitor? Yes, and I can see you've been upsetting yourself about them medals again. Now you let the boy go back home and have yourself a nice sleep. Oh, oh all right, Emma. Don't fuss so. I'll come and see you again soon, General. Come along. Let him have a rest. Come through to the kitchen. You shouldn't have talked about them medals. He thinks of them night and day. Do the police know who stole them yet? No. All we know is that somebody got in one night and took the lot. Left no fingerprints either. But we do know they had a mighty small hand. For he, or she, had to put their fist through that little hole in that broken pane there. See? In order to undo the catch and open the door from the inside. It is small. I doubt I could get my hand through it. Oh, no. I should have thought only a small child could get their hand through this. But surely a child wouldn't think of stealing a soldier's medals. It's a mystery. The poor old gentleman was almost off his head with shock. He's offering a good reward, you know. Five hundred pounds. Five hundred pounds? What a lot of money. I wish I could find them. But I wouldn't take the reward from the old general. You're a nice boy. You come and look in my larder and see if there's anything you fancy. I've some fine homemade meringues there. Oh, no. Thank you very much. Oh, go on. At the same time that Colin was forcing two very large meringues down, three others of the Secret Seven were on their way to Bramley Woods. They were Jack, Barbara and George. They had decided to picnic there while keeping a watch on would-be egg hunters. As they were sitting on the primrose-covered ground, they heard voices not far off, and soon a little group of three came into sight, all boys about Jack's age. And then Jack saw one boy scramble up a tree, and very soon he yelled to the others. Blackbird's nest. Four lovely eggs. Shall I take them all? Take three. One for each of us. This is where we butt in. Come on. I expect you know you shouldn't rob birds' nests. Oh, listen to him, little preacher. Give him an egg, Larry. Sure. Ugh, how dare you throw eggs? I'll pull you down. You I'll... let go of Larry's legs, see? We belong to a club that has instructions to stop this sort of thing. I... I shall report you. Look, we're wearing badges. You clear off at once. Badges? Ha! Look at her silly badge, Larry. It's got SS on it. What's that stand for? Silly snoopers? <laughs> Give me your badge and I'll put it into the bird's nest and see what it hatches into. <laughs> no! Let go of her. Oh, yes. And who's going to stop me? I will. <laughs> one down, one to go. Not so fast. Ah! Ow! Good show, Larry. Ah! Get off of them. Run, Barbara. Get help. To Barbara's great relief, she saw a man lying down, reading under a nearby tree. Oh, please, sir, will you come and help? We've tried to stop some boys who are taking bird eggs, and now they've got my two friends, and I... All right, right. Jack and George were very relieved to see a grown-up suddenly arriving. The man caught hold of the boy sitting on top of Jack and yanked him to his feet. And with one accord, the three bird nesters ran off at top speed. Hey, thanks. Thanks awfully. We we're just trying to stop those boys from robbing nests. Are you a club of nature lovers, then? I mean, is that what those badges are for? Well, we are nature lovers, but our badges mean we all belong to the Secret Seven Club. And one of the things we're doing is preventing nest robbing. And a very good thing, too. I'm like you. I love birds and their nests. In actual fact, I mean to write a book about the nests I found in the last few years. Well, I must say, I like the sound of your club. Good badges, too. Did you, did you make them yourselves? The girls made them. We all meet in the shed with SS on the door, too. We have great fun, and we sometimes help people who are in trouble and solve mysteries. <laughs> <laughs>
Good gracious. By the way, my name is Smith. Tom Smith. Call me Tom if you like. Now, is this club doing anything besides stopping bird nesters? Any great mystery being solved or...? Well, one of the Secret Seven, Colin, is trying to solve a robbery. We gave him that job because he lives next door to the man who is robbed. Really? And, and who was that? I don't suppose you've heard of General Branksome, have you? And his medals? General Branksome? Why, yes. You don't mean you're trying to find the medals? Well, that's Colin's job. But as soon as he's on to any clue, we'll all help, of course. Oh, what an extraordinary lot you are. And do you honestly think you can find those medals? I hope very much we can. For one thing... Jack! George! Louis! That's Colin now. He must have seen the general and then raced off to join us. Hello, you three. <coughs> Who's your friend? Tom Smith. He came to our rescue when some bird nesters turned on us. So you saw the old general, did you? Uh, yes. Does, uh, does Tom know? Oh, yes. We've just been telling him what the Secret Seven do and how we hope to help the old general. Well, in that case, yes, I saw General Branksome. It was pretty awful, really. He was so very upset. The medals were in a long case, about so big. I know, because there was an empty space on the wall. But nobody has a clue about the thief, except that he must have very small hands, because he had to put a hand through a tiny hole in a window to get it a catch inside. And that is the only clue, you say? Absolutely the only clue. Gosh, I never felt so unhappy in my life when the old general was telling me how he loved his medals. He's offered £500 reward, even though he's hardly got any money. Poor old fellow. I wish I knew where those medals were. Where can they be hidden? Who took them? If only we knew. Do you know, I may have a clue to their whereabouts. I'm not sure, but I may have. Go on. Well, as I told your friends here, I love birds and I'm, I'm going to write a book about them. And one of my favourite birds is the owl. They nest in the old trees here. And the other night I was listening to the hoot of this owl lying under a tree when suddenly... Suddenly what? Suddenly, I saw a man creep by me and go to a tree. He was carrying something. He didn't see me, but I could see what he was doing because he had a torch. And what did he do? Well, he lifted up a long, slim box and slid it into a hole in the tree trunk. Then he made off. Did you go and look in the tree when he had gone? Oh, yes, I did that, of course. But my hand was far too big to put down the hole, so I don't actually know what the fellow slipped into the tree. Maybe it was those medals. Maybe something else he'd stolen. But if it is the medals, they could be taken straight back to the general. Show us the tree. Barbara here has small hands. She could feel down the hole and see what's there. Why should I show you? What about the reward? The £500? But surely you wouldn't take that. You know the general is poor. Well, I'll share the reward with you. 400 to me and 100 to you. Nothing doing. For all we know... He may be in league with the thief. We don't intend to ask for a new reward. We'll find the medals ourselves. You can't. Your hands are too big. Maybe that's why the thief chooses small holes in trees to hide his goods. So you can't rob him of the things he's stolen. Now look here. I'll show you who's boss. I'll make you see sense. And he suddenly caught hold of Colin's coat sleeve and pulled him roughly towards him. But the boy slipped free and ran followed by the others. Barbara was very frightened indeed, but the boys were more angry than scared. 
they all raced off and didn't stop until they were out of the woods. Then they threw themselves down on the grass, panting for breath. That man won't come after us, will he? No, too many passers by. Who would have thought he'd turn so suddenly into such a rogue? Do you think he really knows where the medals are? Yes, I do. And I think he can't get them because of his enormous hands. No good at all for slipping into nesting holes. I'm sure that he and the thief are in league together. Tom Smith, or whatever his name is, probably does the planning of robberies. And the other man has small hands and does the stealing and hiding. And he's smart enough to hide the stuff in a place that Tom Smith can't get at. Doesn't trust him. What do we do now? I still feel scared. We simply must have a Secret Seven meeting about this at once. Let's go to Peter's. Come on. Away they trekked, back to the village and Peter's house. They ran down the garden to the shed and were lucky enough to find Janet there. A meeting was called for three o'clock and the Secret Seven were all solemnly seated on the boxes in the shed. Peter turned to George and asked him what had happened to the four of them that morning. George told him about Tom Smith and the small-handed man hiding something in a tree, probably the General's medals. But we don't know which tree. All he knows is that it is one of the trees near to where we were picnicking. Looking for it would be like hunting for a needle in a haystack. Well now, has anyone any ideas? Surely the Secret Seven can think of something between them. Well, if this Tom Smith's hands are too big to go in the hole, I bet he hides and then waits till the other man comes to get the medals, and then snatches them. So why shouldn't one of us hide too, and see which tree it is? Scamper could go as well, and, and uh, might scare them off, so we could get in the tree. I shall go. After all, I was given the job of solving the medals robbery. And I shall go, because I thought of the idea. And I shall go, because I'm head of the Secret Seven. We can't all go. The thief would spot us, or hear us. I'll tell you what we'll do. Colin will point out where the picnic was held, and then we'll spread around and hide in different places, so that if anyone comes that way, one or other of us will see him. There will be no giggling, no noise of any sort. Understood? Oh, yes. We watch to see what tree the thief goes to, then I'll let loose old Scamper. I really do think this is about the most exciting adventure we've ever had. It's quite dangerous. Not if you do as you're told. And mind, if any one of you begins to feel scared, keep still in your hiding place. Don't come out, or you might spoil everything. Susie, Jack's irritating sister, was very curious that night when she saw him fitting a new battery into his torch. Are you going out tonight, then? Where are you going? Nothing to do with you. You're going somewhere with the Secret Seven, aren't you? I know you are. Go on, tell me. Certainly not. Then I'll follow you and get Binky to come too. He'll do nothing of the sort. This is a matter for the Secret Seven and no one else. The Seven all came together as soon as it was dark and they set off. Scamper sniffed here and there as he went along. He was delighted to go out for a walk in the dark of night. They came to Bramley Woods and were soon at the place where they had picnicked. Gradually, the seven disappeared. Scamper, too. Peter climbed a tree, and so did Jack. Janet found a fairly comfortable bush. Pam lay down in some high ferns. Colin and George climbed onto a great branch of an old oak tree. And Scamper lay in some ferns at the foot of Peter's tree, his ears pricked for the slightest whisper from his master on the branch above. Then they heard someone coming. Who could it be? The thief? Tom Smith? Or just a night walker? It was Tom Smith. The Secret Seven held their breath. Tom Smith was hiding now by the broad-trunked oak tree, waiting for somebody to come. He didn't know that Colin and George were up the same tree. 
then another man with an Alsatian arrived. Let's hope he doesn't sniff out Scamper. That's all. What's that? It's me, Wiley. Over here. You get those medals and we'll talk. There's a fine reward out for them now, and we'll share. Oh, we won't. Huh. I might have thought you'd be on the watch for me, Tom Smith. You clear off, else I'll set Nabber on you. Nabber won't touch me. He knows me. You get those things. Go on. Get them yourself. Here they are, down this tree hole. Stick your great fist in if you want them. You know I can't get my hand in there. You were going to double-cross me, weren't you? So, just take them medals out here now and hand them over to me. You don't want to find a big fella like me now, do you? Ha! Ha! Just try! Right. Scamper, come back! Oh no, I've got to rescue him. I'll help. Nabba the Alsatian was amazed to see two boys suddenly dropping from a tree. And as for Tom Smith and Wiley, they couldn't believe their eyes either. What the...? Where on earth did those two kids come from? Well, I know this one. He was here earlier. Come here, you. And you. Take your hands off me. We know all about how your friend here has hidden the medals in a tree. And what's more, we're going straight to the police station. Oh, you are, are you? I'll tell you what you're going to do, my lad. You're going to get that case of medals out of the tree for me. Your hands are quite small enough to get down into that hole. Come on! Get off, dog! Don't you dare kick my dog! Scamper! Scamper, are you hurt? Where did she come from? That bush! How many more of you are there? Me! And me! And us! What is all this, Smith? It's the kids belonging to that silly club they told me about this morning. Look, be sensible, Wiley. Get those medals out of the tree and we'll both be off. No, I don't trust you. Right. I'll make this boy get them for me then. No. Oh, yes, I will. Over here. Ow! Come on, now, stick your hand down there. Ow! I can't. My hand's too big. You're grazing the skin off. I tell you, it won't go in. All right, well, here's a nice small little hand. Oh, no! No! Go on! You take out that case, girl. Do as you're told. Stand away. You're scaring her. She'll find it much easier if you stand right away. Won't you, Pam? The man stood back, and Pam felt in the hole for the case containing the medals. She found it at once and slid it out carefully, but pretended to be still looking for it. Peter took it quietly and, in the dark, opened it. He slipped the medals into his pocket, talking loudly to Pam all the time, hoping the man's attention was elsewhere. That's right. Easy now. Got it, Pam? Slide it out carefully. Don't be afraid. Good girl, here comes the case. Right. I'll take that. What do we do about these kids? They'll race home and tell the police. We need a good start, Tom. Let me tell you this. I'm going to keep you by my side until you hand me half those medals. Well, we can't tie them up, Wiley. No rope, for one thing. Well, we'll leave Nabber on guard. Fine. Tell him, then. Stay, Nabber. All night, see? Round up those kids for me and stay until the morning. You can't do that. Just watch him. Come on, Wiley. Let's get out of here. What are we going to do? Well, anyway, Peter's got the medals. What? The men have only got the empty box. What do you mean? See? But how? Good old Pam. She was so quick, I was able to open the box and remove the medals, then shut it and give it to the men quite empty. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble is, those men will have plenty of time to get away. By the time morning comes and this Alsatian leaves us, the two men will be miles away. I only hope they don't discover too soon that the case is empty and come racing back here to find what we've done with the medals. That's not at all a pleasant thought. Scamper, keep your ears pricked and growl if you hear them returning. Half an hour went by. It got very cold indeed and they were all shivering. 
Then Nabba the Alsatian suddenly rose to his feet, his sharp ears pricked to the utmost. Scamper suddenly sat up too. Hello, the dogs have heard something. Sounds like a bicycle bell. But who would be cycling to Bramley Woods as late as this? We'll yell our heads off. Then maybe he'll stop and we can tell him what's happened. But how can we stop Nabba guarding us? We'll have to warn him about the Alsatian. It would be awful if Nabba went for him. Yes, I didn't think of that. There are two bells. Not just one, I'm sure. Where do you think they are? I can't find and them. And voices. Children's voices. That's Susie. I can hear Susie's voice. Binky's with her. I'm sure it's them. What on earth are they doing cycling here now? Susie knew we had something exciting on tonight. You know how snoopy she is. Well, for once I shall be glad to see that sister of yours and her silly friend. Susie, we're over here! Where are you? It's so dark. Flash your torches. Be careful, Susie. There's an Alsatian guarding us. Don't come too near or the dog will go for you. Dog? What dog? Oh, why is that great dog guarding you? What's happened? We can't tell you now, but you can help us a lot. Go and tell the police we're here and can't get away because of this Alsatian. They may know of a dog handler who can come along and deal with him. Thank goodness you came after us, Susie. We'll do as you say, Jack, and be as quick as we can. The seven listened to the sound of the girls' shrill voices getting further and further away. The bicycle bells rang once or twice, and then no more could be heard. It wasn't long after that a big, powerful car drew up. Then a dark van came up the woodland road and drew to a halt just beyond the car. That's a police van! What a thing to happen to the Secret Seven! Police to the rescue! Look out, for goodness sake! He'll go for you if you come any nearer. He's supposed to be guarding us until daylight. Big Alsatian loose here, Harris. He'll have to be rounded up before we can do anything more. Now, just get your two out. Two? Have they brought two Alsatians? Gosh, we're going to see some fun. Oh, please, they won't fight Nabba, will they? He's not a bad dog. Really, he isn't. Don't let him get hurt, will you? He won't get hurt, Missy, if he behaves sensibly. Don't you scream or shout, children. The dogs won't harm you at all. They'll just round up that other dog and bring him to us. It was all over in minutes, and the children were on their way home, all squashed into the big police car. And then the whole tale came out about the stolen medals, the man called Smith, and how they, the seven, had had the idea of coming to find the medals themselves and ran into trouble. By this time, they were nearly out of the woods and in the lane leading to the main road. And can you give us a description of these men? It sounds like they're the two we're after for a series of robberies. One said his name was Tom Smith, and he called the other man Wiley. And could you stop the car, please? I rather think that was Tom Smith back there, running out of the hare and hounds, with Wiley after him. I expect they've quarrelled about the medals. And then, to the policeman's surprise, Peter began to laugh and laugh. No wonder, for he had the medals safely in his own pocket. But the policeman didn't know that, yet. Peter was determined that the old general should have the medals delivered to him personally by Colin, for that was what Colin had promised. It didn't take long for the police to catch Tom Smith and Wiley, and soon the two cars went on their way again with the seven children, four dogs, two policemen, a dog handler, and two prisoners. The next morning was rather exciting. The time had come for Colin to take the medals to the old general. He felt very nervous as he knocked politely on the front door. Why, it's you, Colin. Come away in. The police are here, but they'll be gone in a minute. 
The police? Oh, then I'll come another time. Don't be silly. Come in. The boy next door to see you, General Branksome. Good morning, Colin. Yes, I've something to tell you. The police have brought me back the case my medals are in. But I'm afraid we have no idea at present where the medals themselves are. Colin here said he'd bring me back my medals, and I believe him. May I have the medal case, please? <laughs> yes, here you are, my boy. Thank you. Oh, well, what's that you've got out of your pocket? A medal. And another. I must be dreaming. And another. <laughs> what did I tell you? I told you this boy said he'd get them back. I knew he'd keep his word. He shall have the reward, five hundred pounds. Oh no, no! Thank you very much. We don't want the reward. That's why I was told to bring them to you myself, so you wouldn't have to pay out such a large sum of money. We, uh, we enjoyed getting them back very much indeed. Uh, well, uh, we'll have to ask you a few questions, boy.、Uh, the first thing is, where did you and your friends get these? We've hunted all over the place for them. They were in a hole in a tree. Indeed. And did you put them in there by any chance? Oh no, Wiley put them there. He has such small hands, sir. The two officers couldn't stay to chat, so they said goodbye, patted Colin on the back, and went, looking rather puzzled. The old general was as happy as a boy all day. If only there was something to give Colin, and something for his friends too. You see, Emma, they won't take the reward. <laughs> There are seven of them, and two girls, Binky and Susie. They helped as well, and there's a dog too. Scamper, you mean? Yes, that's it. Well, General, what do you feel most proud of? My medals, of course. Right. Then why don't you give those children medals too? Just little ones, with their names on one side and with "for bravery" on the other. From all I've heard, they were very brave. Emma, you do think of fine ideas. Of course, just the thing, medals. And I'll ask if I can go to their next meeting and pin them all on. <laughs> What a fine time we shall have! So next week. There is to be a special meeting down in the shed with the general pinning on ten medals. Yes, Binky and Susie are to have one each too. Peter says that's only fair. Ten, did I say? Let me see. Seven for the secret seven. One each for Binky and Susie. That's nine. Oh, and of course, Scamper. The tenth one is for you. Congratulations to you and all the Secret Seven, and may you have many more adventures. <laughs>